and good afternoon. Welcome to the Jack Breslin Student Event Center. I'm Ken Delaney along with my color commentator Mike Botkins tonight for the semifinal matchup in Class C between the Vikings of Hopkins at 17 and 8 for the year and the Rangers of Manton, which coming with a 24 and 2 record here today. Mike, high school basketball at its best when you see a team with eight losses come in and still play some great basketball down the stretch to get to this point of the tournament. There's a lot of excitement about this matchup. Uh, recognition of the fact that both teams are on a roll right now. They're playing very well. Hopkins has an interesting statistic tying what appears to be a state record. They have played in nine overtime games this year. A grand total of like 13 overtime periods, so a couple were obviously double OT. Uh, this is going to be a good matchup and it features some outstanding scores. Tim Kistner for Hopkins at 27 points Ladies a game. And gentlemen, and his counterpart Ryan Michigan Miller, State the South at 23 a game. Ken, Center how about the starters? Well, let's take a look at the starting lineups. First up for the Manton Rangers in the two forward positions. That is Ryan Hiller, number five. He's a six foot two sophomore. And Phil Elzo is a six one sophomore. So a very young lineup with a center position, the six nine senior, Wes Almer. And the two guards, number 20, Matthew Hicks. Hicks is a 5'9", junior, and Chet Brown, number 34, he is a 6'1", sophomore. So you look at that lineup, and very young, the supporting cast that will come in and uh, help out. Imagine they're at 24 and 2 for the year. Now for the Hopkins Vikings, their starting lineup for the semifinal contest here at the Jack Breslin Student Event Center. There are two forwards. Scott Longley, he's a 5'10", 200-pound senior, so he packs some beef in the middle. The other four position will be a 6'2", senior. 185-pound Brad Francis. That center position will be held down by Todd Frazee. He's 6'2", and he is a junior. The two guards will be Kisner, who averages 27 points a game, as you said. 6'1", he is a junior, and Chris Johnston. And Johnston is a 6'0", junior. Kisner twice in the season has had 44 points a game. That's really racking them up, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how these two top scorers lead their teams in this late afternoon matchup. A lot of crowd support. The winner of today's contest will move on to take on Detroit St. Martin de Porres. A winner earlier today against Lansing Catholic Central for the state finals coming up on Saturday here at the Jack Breslin Student Event Center. These athletes probably had the opportunity to watch at least half of that uh, DePoris game, and so they know what they face in the finals, but not to uh, look forward because two teams are going to tip off here. This is going to be a hotly contested game, probably a high-scoring game. When it comes tournament time, a lot of times it comes down to who makes the fewest mistakes. I guess if you turn that back around, Mike, then, then it maybe who plays the best defense to cause those mistakes? Well, I think so. Uh, you know, defense is always the staple. You know, you really can depend upon that. Uh, you know, it's the thing that sets the stage. I always, uh, when I was coaching, made the point of saying that uh, you can't think about offense, but you must think when you're playing defense. You've got to think about position. You've got to think about that player that you're facing in terms of what his skills and talents are. So I think defense is what gets you over the butterflies in a big game like this. You come out with that defensive intensity and then just let the offense happen. Now the Manson Rangers coming with the bright orange jerseys, the Hopkins Vikings in the uh, light blue. And to jump in center circle for Manson, the big 6'9 senior, Wes Ulmer. And he is a big boy, listed at 235. 6-9 on your scorecard, number 44. And he goes against Frazee to tip down to the hands of the Rangers. This is Chet Brown. Looking for the three, it's up off the iron, won't go for Hicks. Rebound followed by Almer up and in. Well, showing his strength, uh, went way up over the top, just took it away from him, and then on the nice jumper off the board. And Manton takes a 2-0 lead. From the corner, off the iron will go by Francis. With the rebound, stays with Hopkins. Kisner, dumped down low. 
triple team, ball loose in the paint, out of bounds, off the Rangers of Manton, and it'll be Hopkins' ball. Kistner with great confidence in his skills, a beautiful inside pass that time. Johnston, run the top of the circle, needs some help to Francis. Now back up the top they go. Look inside, blocked away. A ball loose at half court, still loose, and finally comes up to Hopkins. Three on two break and a double dribble on top. Never fully got control of the ball. Now I think the uh, travel might have occurred a, a little bit higher out to midcourt here, but referee with a correct call. 7.08 to play, first quarter, and Manson on top, 2 nothing. Picking him up man to man. Hiller on top. Now between the circles for Hicks. Into the paint, the turnaround, isolation up and good by Hiller. Hiller, the 6'2 sophomore, the scoring leader that time with a lesson in how to shoot the jump shot. Trying to bring it inside, nothing there for Hopkins. Gave up the dribble. The ball is loose and up to Manton. Here they come on the run. Pushing it ahead, right to the hole. The scoop from the left side with the right hand, and it's here. Chet Brown that time on the solo. He took it away on the steal, and a little drop shot on the left-hand side for the bucket. And Brown is also a sophomore at six foot one. It's the one-three-one zone on this possession. Underneath they look. The reverse layup blocked there by Ulmer. The ball out of bounds, and off Hopkins. Check that off uh, Manson, and it'll be Hopkins' ball on their own baseline. Almar showing the swipe that time. He wiped it away with the block. Up top they go. Three-point try and won't find the mark. For Francis. And the ball loose at half court. Jump ball. And that'll go Hawkins' way in the change of possession arrow. Look almost like the state wrestling finals oh, for a minute. Excellent call. I glanced up and said, who's in the down position? <laughs> Hopkins and Bonnig right in front of us here at half court. Six minutes to play, and it's a 6 0 lead for Manson over Hopkins. And this Class C semifinal. Francis for three. In and out, no. Rebound, Manson. Elzel that time with the rebound. He's a solid 6 3 inside, so they've got some height. It's 6 9 and 6 3. Palmer battling down low. Gets the ball. Coming baseline up, no good. Rebound follow up, and this one's in for Helsel. Helsel. Timeout. Manson is taking an 8 0 lead with 5.26 to play in this first quarter. Well, videotapes of today's contest are available through Advanced Video Services. You can watch AVS at 5447 Columbiaville Road, Columbiaville, Michigan, 48421, or call 810-793-8889. It's a good way to preserve some memories of a memorable event. Kistner has not gotten into the offense for Hopkins at 27 points per game. It's very critical that he has the opportunity to score, and uh, that has not transpired at this point in time. Manson has showed his dominance on the inside. Crazy is the center for Hopkins at six foot two, and he's battling inside. Helsel is six three, and of course the big man Homer at six foot nine. A definite height advantage and a rebounding advantage so far shown by Manson. Well, that was the telltale statistic in the first game. It might be here in the second game also. You must rebound well uh, when that other team has a size advantage. And, of course, that means block out, keep them as far away as you can from the bucket. Shane Waringa just checks into the lineup now. For the Hopkins, Vikings with the ball. Coming baseline, blocked there. Francis going for the jump shot out of bounds. It will be... Hopkins ball. You now Umlor making his presence felt once again inside, knocking it out of the air. Here's yes. the three point try. Kisner gets it to go. Well, he gives all appearance of being a consummate basketball player. Up until this point in time, we've only watched him with the assist and the feeds, but that time with the long range three. And Hopkins is on the board, 8 3 with five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Elsel going to the paint. 
Bring it back out again. Elzel, top of the key. Hicks looking down low for Ulmer, and ball out of bounds. Official looking for some help, and it will be off. Hopkins, Manton ball down low. Chet Brown's going to inbounds here on a set play. To the top of the key, the three-point spot up and well short on the jumper by Hiller. Rebound foul over the whistle. Be inside that time Chet Brown with the rebound. Hiller's long three-point just, just fell short. Looked like the alignment was good. But Brown, who uh, shows dogged determination out there, he's uh, tenacious. Waringa with a foul, the 6'4 uh, senior, his first and first team foul of the game. Brown at the free throw line. He's up and off the iron, no good. Still an 8-3 ball game. Manton on top, 9-3. As Brown hits the second one. 4.40 to play, first quarter. Dangerous pass up top. Free throw line jumper, bone go for Langley. Kistner still just one shot opportunity on the afternoon. That was a three, and he was good on that one. Ball tipped away by Hopkins, and they'll run it out now. Down court, the ball loose, still loose out of bounds. Who booted it last? And the officials will give it to Hopkins. Hopkins going to keep possessing. Chet Brown didn't agree with that call. He was the one that uh, dislodged that uh, ball and thought it was going to go his direction. Long lay will inbound from the corner. Johnston will come out. And Kistner. we'll see Matt Hazen come in for the first time. Kistner, a very unselfish ball player. He definitely will, will throw it to the open player. Brown slaps it out of Hazen's hands and out of bounds. Right in front of the Manton bench. Manton leads by six. Hopkins with the ball. Here's Francis. Into the paint. Muscles in there and a whistle and a foul on the shots. And that'll send Brad Francis, the 6'2", 185-pound senior, to the free throw line. Three fifty-nine left in this first quarter and a 9-3 contest. Some changing defenses out there. As the Rangers on every possession making some slight alterations. They're really trying to deny uh, the ball to Kisner, recognizing his scoring potential. Chet Brown's been facing him, uh, playing in that deny position, trying to keep him out of the offense. Francis' his first points. Here's the uh, full court pressure being applied by Hopkins. Manton beats it. Feet underneath the Ulmer. Going strong to the hole, up and good. The big guy showing the ability to move it up and down the floor that time. He's the recipient of the transition bucket. Hopkins at the other end, trailing by seven. Into the paint, shot up, it won't go. Rebound, fought for, and the Rangers up with it. Kistner just not looking like he, he's the one that's going to take charge out there offensively. He's the distributor right now instead of the shooter. Brown, the sophomore, whistling a foul as he heads toward the paint. That's on the floor, and that's the second team foul on Hopkins. A couple Rangers out there that definitely don't play like sophomores. Chet Brown really making a statement here early in this basketball game. At this point in time, Ryan Hiller uh, just with the one jumper, but uh, shows also that great potential. Brown is 6-1, Hiller at 6-2. Here's the shot, way off the mark. But a whistle and a foul. No whistle stepped on the line. Well, Hiller had inside position that time on the rebound, but uh, put his foot on the line. Looked like there was a bump on top against Hicks. And maybe uh, some body after the shot. No whistle there. Hicks was off to the right on that uh, three-point attempt. 3.05 to play first quarter. Seven-point lead for Manson as Hopkins brings it in the paint. Off the iron hard, no good. Rebound out to Manson. See if they start up the fast break. Slow it down a bit. Lutke just into the game. And the first three-pointer of the night 
for Manson goes. Matthew Hicks, Matthew Hicks number 20. Three. The junior drains it from the corner, and it's 14 to four, Manson on top. Pull up off the free throw line, won't go for Johnston. Manson with a big edge on the boards. They create it with a defense. And quickly down court, the lay-in is good for Kisner. Kisner taking no chances. Took his time, put it up there ever so soft. He's the one that can finalize those drives. Uh, he's the one that's got to take it to the bucket and look to put it in. Brown, he'll stop and pop for three off the iron now. The fans helping the referees that time. Here's a shot from the left side again. Won't go for three this time. Hopkins would look like Brown once he grabbed that rebound. Uh, kind of a running start before he did the dribbling. Sing the traveling song. 14-6. Manton on top down to a minute 45 to play in the quarter. And there's the pull-up jumper to go for Johnston. Now Kisner's teammates have had the opportunity to score. They've just got to start draining a few. That time Johnston's with the bucket. A minute and a half to play. First half. First quarter, that is. Here are the state semifinals. Ball loose on top. Track down there by Hiller. Facing the man-to-man -man out of a 1-2-2 two -two set. Hiller gave up the dribble. Lutke out to help him. Hiller on the double team right in front of the Hopkins mansion. A whistle and a foul. That's number three on Hopkins. Hopkins that time coming out of the man-to-man -to, -man to do a little trap. Uh, they get that uh, sideline to help them out a little bit. Then they jump off of man or double team. Did not create the turnover. Instead got the foul. Lupker is checked in for Hopkins. And also Brad Francis back in. Into the Rangers, 41, Phil Hessel. Bill Helsel back in for the Manton Rangers. 45 seconds to play. Underneath they go to Ulmer blocked away. The follow up and no good. The follow again. This one finished off by Helsel underneath. Helsel. Offensive board play. Up and no good. Up and no good. Up and good. The 6'9 Ulmer got blocked on the first shot. 28, 27, 26 seconds to play in the quarter. Manton by eight, 16 to eight. Hopkins looking inside. Cutter back door off the glass and good. And that is Glumker. A good two-man game that time to avoid the big guy inside. 16 to 10 and nine seconds, eight, seven seconds to play. Hopkins coming on, trapping the ball. Try to stop Hiller from getting off a shot. They finally clear it off, look inside. The ball, Helsel, does he have it? The turnaround flies up and off the mark by Hicks as the buzzer sounds. And after it looked like to be a runaway by Hopkins early on, and by Manton early on, Hopkins has pulled it close by six at the end of the first quarter. Our score, Manton 16, Hopkins 10. Other well, defense made a statement. Uh, Hopkins came out with that trapping defense coming off the man-to-man -man and then trapping out here on the wings. And, uh, in fact, that last possession easily could have been a five-second possession. 16 to 10 here at the end of the first quarter. Uh, you know, defense again making a statement and taking them out of their offensive set. Big guy looked a little bit tired late in that quarter. Uh, Wes Almar, the big 6'9 boy for Manton. And uh, gonna be interesting to see if he can play in this up-tempo game. He definitely was a force early on. Almar, 6'9, 235 pound senior. Three team fouls for Hopkins in the first quarter. Only one for Manton, so that's not a factor yet in this game. The winner plays Detroit St. Martin de Porres Saturday afternoon at noon here at the Breslin Student Event Center. Hopkins is no stranger to semifinal action. This same group of young men were at the semis in football, so you know, the old adage holds that if you're an athlete, you can do it all. Manton comes out on the floor. With Hiller, Hicks. Umlor is out there. Lucky is in. Right in front Nelson. of us down here on the floor, Ken. We've got Ryan Hiller with the inbounds. And we're underway. 
second quarter action and a 16 to 10 lead for Manson. Kicks over to Ludke. It's running the offense now. Looking for movement away from the ball. Isolation underneath. Now they get it to Umlor. Up and good. Feed to the big man in the paint, and uh, he makes it happen. Oh, I always look for the, the instigator, the person that starts it out there. And that time, the guard, Matthew Hicks, with a beautiful shovel pass. And an eight-point lead again for Manton. 7.25 to play. First half. Three-point try for Hopkins. Up and off the iron. No good. In fact, over the back of the supports and out of bounds by Kisner. Kisner pushed a little bit further out on the floor than he'd probably like to be that time. He's got the shooting stroke, so you know the old coach says, uh, "Watch out! The kid can put him up and score quickly." Kisner, a six-one junior, 170 pounds. Here comes Hicks on the dribble across half court. Chet Brown is back in there, back it in. Now dump it low underneath. Oh, Elzo blocked himself. Just got too far under. Hopkins the other way on the fast break and crunched underneath. No call. The follow-up won't go. A block on that one. Finally, the ball is loose and into the hands of Manton. Brown pushes it ahead to Hicks. Back to Brown and good for three. Uh, Hicks and Brown uh, almost carbon copies of each other. Uh, one being just a little bit smaller, but uh, dogged determination, good guards. Here's a steal. Kisner lost it. Spin across half court is Hicks. Waits for the team to come down now. Brown's going to come baseline, feed it back into Ulmer, Umler, and then he's fouled as he tries to go to the hole. Hicks and Brown have total control of their game. That time, uh, Hicks on the outside, or excuse me, Brown on the outside, just fakes the three, drives to the bucket, gives everybody the look that he is going to go up with the drive and just shovels it off. These kids are very unselfish. They really look like they execute as a team. Francis leaves with two personal fouls. Big boy, Wes Umler. Nails it, and it's now a 12-point lead for Manton. 22 to 10 with 6.17 to play in the first half. Umlor with a second, and it's good. He's breathing like a quarter miler out there. 23 to 10. Free throw line jumper, good. For Hopkins. And Todd Frazee, their 6'2 center. The ball all stays. Just turn around and shoot it. Everybody left him. Here's Brown. Almost taken away there by Kisner. Down low they look. And up and good. Elsa knew how to finish it. It's an excellent example of what Brown's able to do out in front. Beat you with the dribble, distribute the basketball. Here's Risner into the paint. The pull up there, nice floater. Uh, he just got to get him more shot opportunities because he's going to finalize them when he takes them into the paint. Kisner averages 27 points a game during the regular season. 5.25 left in this first half, and it's a 25-14 ball game. Here's Brown for three again and nails it. He is having just an outstanding basketball game. And again, remember, he is just a sophomore. 28-14. Manson on top. Hopkins all alone for the three off the mark. Won't go there for Johnston. Will they keep the ball alive? Kisner, he'll stop and pop for the three off the iron. To the right, no good. And this time Hiller with the board for Manson. Hicks for three, in and out. Rebound, follow underneath is Hiller. Strong, won't go, but he's fouled. Check some stats on Brown. He's averaging 15 points a game. Hiller at 22, so gives you an idea that this is uh, no fluke that he's having this outstanding game. I have been so impressed with his floor game. He's got confidence in his shot, and his ball handling skills are just outstanding. Renee Lafrenier in his 11th year. 170 and 95 the record at Manson. Fouls on the floor, so here's the pull up again, another three. Or Chet Brown. Traffic. Whoa. 
He's feeling it, Ken. 31-14, Manton with a lead. Here's Kisner to answer the other way and does. That's what we expect to see from Kisner. A ball taken away from the backside. Hopkins with a back. But they trail by 14, 31-17 with 4-11 to play, first half. Long range three, in and out, long go for Hopkins. And the rebound taken away by Manton. Let's watch Brown out in front. Look at that dribble. To the corner for Hicks. Sealed off there by Kisner. And there's a reach around on Kisner. Got a little body as he reached around, and that'll be his first person. He's trying to go for that backdoor steal that time. Didn't quite execute it. 16 fouls. Check that that's his second personal foul on Kisner, and the 16 foul on Hopkins. Only one team foul on Manton in the first half. Longley will come out for Hopkins. Ryan Hiller out in front, just holding the ball over his head, looking for the offense. They leave it baseline for the big man, up and good for Umler. Excellent offensive strategy. Pretty much an isolation. You take the ball weak side, take the big man, give it to him, and let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Made a nice adjustment on his shot, too. Scramble for the ball from the scores table, and Hicks it's off Hopkins. With the beautiful play that time. He just has the presence of mind. He goes up in the air, looks around, and says, I'll take you. 3.18 to play first half, 33-17. Manton dominating this first half. They couldn't play much better than this. Hopkins going out after the ball. Hicks, the roll, finger roll is up and in. When you're feeling it, just let it happen. They'll come after Kisner now. Kisner gets a pick. Stead comes inside, ball loose, stripped away. Glupker with it. Back out to Kisner. Team defense by the Rangers doing a nice job. Everybody's aware of Kisner's presence, his location on the floor. And then they help out. Kisner on top. He gets some help, comes free throw line. It's up and good. That's why he's the big scorer for him. Yeah, no doubt he can score, but he just hasn't had enough shot attempts. 35-19. And, and he can cut a lead very quickly. So this 35-19, Manton should not take, uh, take it for granted whatsoever. 2.20 to play in the first half. A little bit of a weave out in front. Hicks. Here's Hiller for three, off the iron won't go. And a whistle, foul on the rebound. This will go against the Over the back call that time, it's gonna be on Helsel. Hopkins with good inside position. And the 6-3, Phil Helsel up over the back. His second personal foul, only the second team foul on Manson here in the first half. 2.08 to play in the first half, 35-19. Manson on top. <laughs> Underneath, the layup is up and good for Hopkins as Kerber gets his first bucket. Kerber, the 5'8 senior. Hopkins looking for the trap. Manton beats it. Out of a minute, 42 to play in the half. Brown popping for three. In and out won't go. He's got three of them already tonight. Here's Ulmer underneath. Umler and gets it to go. The big offensive board, and obviously Brown, no hesitation. He'll shoot it right in your face at long range. And knows that he has the rebounding help underneath. Into the paint shot blocked away, but a whistle. Foul on the floor. Referee signaling that we've got a holding foul. 34 is the number. Chet Brown, that's his first and a third team foul against Manson. Francis is back in now for Hopkins. Long lay into the paints. Umlor clearing it again. Down to a minute 10 to play. Hicks spins into the paint to charge.
Kistner that time with a good defensive move. He just simply did it just like it tells you in the books. He stayed right there defensively, did not initiate the contact. On the spin dribble, he was ready to take the charge. Made it five to play first half, and Manton leads big 37-21. Hopkins with Francis on top. Gave up the dribble. They're running a chaser. They're running Hiller on Kistner all over the floor. The two uh, leading scores matching up. And Kistner pops for the three. It won't go. A box and one strategy. I'm sure that uh, Kistner's probably faced that defense numerous times this year. Clock rolls down to 33 seconds to play in the first half. Brown hands it off there for Hiller. Gave up the dribble. Needs some help, needs some help, Hiller. Ball tipped away, and coming up with it is Kerber for the easy lay-in. He scored a couple of those now since entering the basketball game. 37-23, 15 seconds to play, first half. Hopkins' trap out front has proved to be one of their best offensive uh, strategies. Francis working on Brown, down to seven, six seconds to play, ball taken away again. Here comes Kisner with three seconds, two seconds to play. Kisner off the glass and good, just before the buzzer. And that pulls Hopkins within a dozen at halftime. That makes a statement in terms of momentum. And again, their defense uh, starting their offense with the traps out in front, creating the turnovers. They get two easy buckets at the end of the game. You know, Kistner putting on a little flurry there. He's got a lot of off offensive potential. It's the coaching strategy now. How do you get him open? At the end of our first half of action of this classy semifinal from the Jack Breslin Student Events Center. Our score, Manton 37, Hopkins 25. The second half coming up. This facility resemble an academic classroom is very much appreciated. Great way to relive the excitement. Well, a big defensive flurry at the end of the first half, and the Hopkins Vikings have pulled within a dozen at halftime, but they still trail Manton 37 to 25. Kendall Eni, along with Mike Botkins from the Breslin Student Event Center in this Class C semifinal action. As you look at the leading scores for the uh, Manton Rangers, a dozen each for Chet Brown, the outside story, and then Wes Umlor, the inside story, with a dozen points and six rebounds. In fact, Manton owns a 19 to six rebounding edge in that first half, Mike. Big statistic. The other big statistic is the fact that uh, Manton is shooting over 50% from the floor at 15 at 26. So, you know, they're really smoking it. And uh, Chet Brown with three threes in a row. Uh, crowd behind us talking about the fact that Ryan Hiller, their top scorer, has just not gotten untracked yet. So that's one more offensive weapon we've yet to see from the Rangers. Brown and Hiller are both sophomores to lead the way for Hopkins in that first half. 14 points for Tim Kisner. He averages 27 a game, and offensively, no one else has really gotten a track at all for Hopkins. Well, Kisner is one of those kids, obviously, that uh, scores with not a lot of fanfare. You know, I kept uh, uh, urging him on, really, to get more shot opportunities, but he still ends the first half with 14. And Hopkins starts his second half of the ball. Kisner on the lobby inside. The spin move there, no good, but there's a whistle and a foul, and that'll set a long lay to the free throw line for the first time. Another good example of Kisner on the floor. He's not inclined to force the shots. Very unselfish out there, that time setting up his team more mate long low long lay long lay not uh, not many 5 10 guys play forward in high school basketball but long lay big and strong 5 10 200 pounder a lot of shoulders it's up and no good on the free throw let's take a guess let's say he played linebacker on that football team that went to the state semifinals second free throw this one also won't go and Umlar just sweeps it away and we say rebounding he says rebound. He's got seven. And here's Hopkins with some pressure on the ball. Double team has been effective. Hicks goes inside, up and shot no good. Rebound taken away by Hopkins. Francis the other way, blocked there, back into his face by Umlor. The ball loose on the floor, and Manton up with it. Blocked shot for the big guy. 
Spin inside, and there's Hiller's offensive strength. <laughs> Mr. Hiller said, the time has come. Solo. 39-25, Manson up by 14. In the paints, and there's a walk. As Longley tried to back his way in with a couple of setter steps. Well, he looked up and took a good look, sized up the situation, and said, I'm in trouble. Let's watch for the double team out here. See when the guard comes across, see if he helps out. And a double dribble. Hicks spent a little too much time looking at the defense, maybe, and turned over the ball. Well, I was not focusing visually on Hicks. Didn't actually see that. Maybe just a hesitation. Brought it up to the top of his dribble and held it. Mm -hmm. 6.50 to play. Umlor almost makes the steal and dies down low. He's a force inside. Big long arms and he's six foot nine. Here comes Hicks the other way. Dish it low. Hiller off the glass and in. Check that Hicks Hiller. with a little bit of reckless abandon as he brought that ball down. You thought that he was on the verge of a turnover, but the last moment he made the beautiful drop off. And Helsel, the recipient of the pass. 41-25 with 6.19 to play. And Francis off his hands and out of bounds. Skip pass that time, a little high and unreachable. Out of bounds, it's gonna be timeout. Hopkins, they're going to talk about it. They feel it's slipping away, Ken. 6.17 to play in this third quarter. And Manton has opened up the lead by 16 now, 41 to 25. Manton has shown that they've got a lot of offensive weapons. Uh, you know, they've got uh, the inside game with Umlor doing a really nice job. They've got the outstanding guard play with Hicks and Browns. We haven't seen a lot of Hiller, but we know that he's a talented ball player. So they've got a lot of weapons, and uh, they're using using them here in this semifinal matchup against Hopkins. And right now, they've got the lead 41-25. Manton coming into this game at 22. Hopkins with a 17-8 and record under first-year coach Jack Clunder. Hopkins in the blue, trimmed in white, and Manton in the bright orange. Hopkins, excuse me, Manton is coached by Rainey Lafernay. Chet Brown uh, running by us here at the scorer's table, and he is uh, definitely soaked with perspiration. Puts a lot into this game. Brown, a 6-1 sophomore, 180-pounder. He'll do the inbounding for Manton. He and Matthew Hicks do a nice job of running this ball game. They're at the controls. Lob on the inbound goes to Hiller. Kisner squares off with him. Leading scores for both teams. Here's Hicks set for the three. Off the mark, no good. Rebound Hopkins, they want to push it ahead. Down low to Longley, spin blocks back into his face. Francis up top, left it well short. Rebound though, taken away by Hopkins. And Lumker. Kisner. He'll come baseline into the paint. Leave it low for Francis off the glass. No good, but he's fouled. Kisner, what a great dish down low. Yeah, he's just such a talented ball player. He has great peripheral vision. He sees the floor, sets up everybody well, very well. Who's the foul on? We on the big boy? Kisner is also only a junior. The foul by Manton. It's going to be on Helsel. Got to give a little credit to Umlor there on that transition. I don't think uh, the coach watches that on the replay. He's probably never run the court in less time. He really hustled down there, made an excellent defensive play to stop the transition. The well, first is out, not in. Umlor does pick up the foul. That's his first. Second team foul on Matt. Francis with a second one. It's up and this one's hitting out no good. Rebound taken away by Longley, but then he lost it in the paint. Brown coming out of the pack with it. Yeah, he's holding the thigh. He took a knee in the thigh. Fires across the half court strap to Hiller. Looks like he's going to recover quickly. Underneath off the glass and good by Helsel. Well, they've got that duo inside that can both score. Umler and Helsel. Down low they go. The shot off the glass and no, a charge. Oh, my land. Kisner. Yeah, I agree. With, with a Mr. personal Kisner. foul, and that'll be number three. That was a nice penetrating move. Uh, he had the uh, tenacity of the scorer that time. Uh, he didn't initiate the contact. Took it away from him. Kisner with three. Matt Hazen will come back in as Johnston comes out. 
5.24 to play. Here in the third quarter, right on in front of us, Francis with a tip away steal. Here comes Kisner, down the middle, laid up from that left side with the left hand and good. Changes the ball in midair to the left hand and I think that's their first two points in the second half. 43-27. Five minutes to play, third quarter. Underneath they go, here is Helzo. Oh, right down on top. As Longleg just tried to uh, break his fall. Either that or he made a statement that said, nope, don't bring it in here. Don't bring that stuff in here. I'm not going to give you the easy. Manton's going to take, uh, oh no, it's just a call from the, on the out of bounds play. I thought they were going to call timeout. Yeah. Almost looked like it. The inbound goes right there to Hiller underneath, off the glass and in. Uh, Hiller showing just outstanding footwork inside. Isolated his defensive man with a drop step. 45-27, Manton on top. Kisner will fire for three, won't go. Tip out though, will go back to Hopkins. Here's a three-point drive the other way for Hazen. That won't go, and now here comes Manton down court, and there's a travel as Lucky. Lost it on the dribble, got it back, but then couldn't stop his feet from sliding. Lucky just couldn't put the brakes on. He was looking for brake shoes. Four and a half minutes to play in this third quarter. And Hopkins with the ball. There's the three-pointer. That'll put them a little closer. Matt cuts Hazen. The, cuts the lead to 15. Now they're, of course, pressuring all over the floor. Hazen on Brown. Look for the double team on that right side. Brown dishing back out. Here's Helsel. Won't go, but the rebound. Hiller whistle and a foul. Going to be Scott Longley, I think, inside again. Scott knows that he's forced to have good position. That time just uh, pushing it a little bit too far. A dribbling exhibition by... Uh, Brown in terms of not giving up your dribble. Went to the corner, set everybody up. Long lay with his second, the inbound. Shot from the baseline. Hiller. And Hiller with another one. Hey, Ryan Hiller is pretty good on that inbounds play, isn't he? Just set him up and look for him. He's come alive in this third quarter, and it's a 47-30 ball game. He's got great moves away from the basketball. Four minutes to play, third quarter. Here's Francis coming into the paint, a whistle and a foul against Umlor. Helser and Umlor that time doing a good job of a mugging. They combined on that mugging inside. Well, it will go against Helsel, not on Mark. That's the third on Helsel. And he's going to come out. Lucky comes back in, so they'll trade some height. Helsel is 6'3", and Lucky at 5'10". Hasn't been a good quarter so far for Hopkins. As Francis hits the free throw. He's one for three at the charity strike. Two for four as he nails them both. 47-32. Back to a 15-point lead for Matten coming down courts. Hicks dishes off to Heller in the corner and goes tumbling to the floor. Back out top, Brown shot up and no good, but it's a foul against Hopkins. Playing with a little bit of frustration out there right now. Brown has excellent uh, strength out there. Just able to go up in traffic and a little hang time. Gets off the floor well. He's got the quickness to be an outstanding guard. Kurt Glumpker with a foul. He's also the sophomore. That's his first. And the fourth team foul on Hopkins. Chet Brown to the free throw line to shoot two. He's the long range gun. Dozen points in the first half. Yet to score here in the second half. Short and to the right. A little more visual contact this time. Chet, bring the eyes up off the dribble. There we go. Stick it. And it's good. The free throw shooting clinic by Coach Mike Botkins. Yeah, I shot a whopping 58%, I think. 48-32. Hopkins coming baseline on the run and jumper up and good there for Glumpker. They're going to need him to start dropping. 48-34. Touch pass at half court. Lutke, look underneath to the big man. Umlor will not go. The follow by Hiller's up and in. Well, nice play by the Rangers. Doing a real good job of getting the ball down the floor. Great touch pass by Hiller. And then he's rewarded with a putback. Kisner looked at the alley-oop. Not there. 
3.05 to play. Here's Kisner down the middle, shot up and will not go. But a whistle and a foul. It's helped up by Hiller. You've got to like this Kisner kid. Really does a nice job. Tim Kisner uh, just so under control when he takes the ball to the hoop, and he never stops looking for that pass off. Some guards are going to focus on that rim, and they fail to see the openings that transpire as they drive to the paint. But not Kisner. Tim does a real nice job. He distributes that basketball looking for his teammates. Almlor with a second personal foul, and that's the fourth team foul on Manson. Free throw up and no good. In and out, won't drop. Second one is good, and it cuts to the end of 15, 50 to 35, Manton on top. Putting pressure on the ball. They clear it to the half-court table across the way, and there's a Manton turnover. You notice that nobody even reached up over there at that scorer's table. They all just ducked. Uh, Walter Dell was over there. He's probably the best athlete of the bunch. Johnston inside, nice feed, up and good by Blumker. Lupter that time with a quick shot, recognizing that he had to get it off quick. Heller has it tipped away by Kisner, but comes back up with it on the dribble. Kisner just laid himself out flat going on after that ball. Brown spins away from the defense, comes back into the paint. Here's Hiller, strong from that right side, no good, but a foul. Strong is the correct description. It's not going to be denied when he gets it in there tight. Hopkins pressure defense does make a statement though and it has the potential to uh, erode this lead a little bit because uh, they get uh, Manton throwing those loop passes and anything can happen. I mean, that's a coach's nightmare. Every time that ball goes up high, I'm going, uh oh, watch out. 2.27 to play here in this third quarter. Long lay will come out. Ryan Hiller at the line, up and nothing but net. Hazen has checked back in for Hopkins. 51-37. Manton on top. Second one up off the iron, no good. Rebound tipped back into the hands of Hazen. He'll get trapped, double team at half courts. Give it to Glumker. Ball loose. Humlor with it. There's too many guys running through the passing lane. Here comes Hiller, wants to take it alone. Up and good with the left hand. Oh, outstanding move. High off the board with the left hand and had to fade away a little bit to avoid the defense. 53-37. Here's Johnston himself, an imaginative shot. Scoop up no good, but he's fouled. Number 44, the 6'9", Wes Umler that time, stepping in, making his position clearly established, went to the floor, drew the charge. Coach says, good job, Wes. Charge against Johnston. Long pass to half court. Francis with a tip. The ball loose and out of bounds. Francis got high and he came to the floor, kind of lost his balance, couldn't hang on to it. Was that Brown that time with the length of the court pass? I think it was. Kid probably plays shortstop in baseball. Brown on the inbound over to Hicks. Minute 50 to play, ball loose in the paint, still loose. Hicks back up with it, he's gonna take it. The numbers are Manton's way, they take it to the hole on the layup by Hicks. Quickness personified, Hicks with the bucket. Hicks, the 5'9", junior. Underneath, there's the shot blocked away by Umlor, but back into the arms of Hazen. Out of a minute 25 to play. Johnston, up top to Glumker. Looking at that baseline, Francis shot off the iron, no good. Brown will run it across the half court stripe with a minute 10 to play. See Brown that time just looking over all of his options. Ball he tipped away, play. here comes Hopkins the other way, and there's a reach in foul. As Lucky had it, lost it, and a little bit of frustration move, trying to reach across the body and take it away from Glumker. That's always an assurity. After you make the turnover, you're much inclined to go a little bit too aggressively on the defensive side, and you beat the foul. Longley comes in for Hazen for the Hopkins lineup. And Helsel will come in for Lutke for the Manton lineup. Down to exactly a minute to play in this third quarter, 55-37. Manton with the lead. And Hopkins with the ball.
Johnston spots for the three off the iron to the right, no good. Brown with a rebound and their whistle foul. A frustration underneath by Glumker. That's 17 fouls on Hopkins, so the uh, one and one will send him back the other way to shoot the free throws. Brown that time showing his tenacity inside. Not to be denied, that ball was all his. I think he would have taken it away from his 6'9 counterpart there if it needed to. The 1996 Michigan High School Athletic Association Boys Final. We're at a semifinal game, a Class C semifinal game. Free throw no good by Brown. A rebound tip finally comes down to the hands of Hopkins. Brown tries to come back defensively on it. Go to the baseline. Looking there for Kerber. And a whistle and a foul on the baseline. Six team fouls on Manson now. So with 34 seconds to play, one more foul by Manson, and both teams are in the bonus. Big 18-point lead, 55-37. And ball goes to Francis, standing on the three-point line. Shot off wide to the left, but Almler can't hang on to it. Out of bounds. Kisner inside that time, just uh, interfering with the big guy a little bit. And we've still got the basketball, that being Hopkins. Kisner spots for the three, falling away. Got tripped up on his way down. Well short, and here comes Hicks the other way. Kisner flies past him, lays it up and in. Hicks used the bucket to his advantage that time. Goes in on the right side with an easy bucket. Five, four seconds to play. Kisner down in the corner, lost the handle on it, out of bounds, off Hopkins. Kisner asking the official for a foul. 2.5 seconds on the clock here in the third quarter and a 20-point Manton lead. Kisner, they go high for Johnston, feed it into the paint, shot up, and long lay is good on the lay-in as the buzzer sounds. Good move inside that time, took it down in the paint, but uh, not a real good quarter for Hopkins. Uh, they really struggled, the Vikings trailing 57 to 39. They're gonna have to have a miracle fourth quarter. In contrast, Manton showing a lot of weapons out here. They've got the good, strong inside game, big front line, and the guard play is outstanding. And in the second half, we've seen the emergence of Ryan Hiller. His stats uh, now being uh, told to be very true to us because he's got a lot of talent, a lot of strength going to the bucket, and uh, seems to have really settled down. I'm sure the sophomore probably brought, brought some butterflies out here into the semifinal game, but he's got that under control. And Manton is working very assuredly towards a matchup with Detroit DeBoris in the finals for the Class C state championship. Well, Umlor, who had a dozen in the first half, picked up three more rebounds, but has yet to score in that third quarter. Brown, who had a dozen in the first half, with just one point in the third quarter. But Ryan Hiller, with just two points in the first half, with 11 that quarter. 11 in the quarter. Well, he's their career-leading scorer uh, at this point in time with 957 points as a sophomore, so uh, he's fast approaching their career leader at that sophomore level. At the end of three, 57-39, Manson leads Hopkins. 17 fouls for Hopkins and six for Manson. So it's the bonus the rest of the way for these teams. Coach Rene Lafrenet from uh, Manton, uh, Rainey Lafrenet, has to uh, think uh, pleasant thoughts as he looks at all these underclassmen. And Manton starts the fourth quarter with a ball. Brown, he'll stop and pop for three, and well short. Umlor falls to the floor, tangled up underneath there with long legs. The ball flies out of bounds. Now, Brown that time with that in-your-face move, he uses just a little head fake, a little ball movement to distract you, and then he shoots at long range. He's got great range because he's got such good legs. You know, he's seldom going to be short on that shot. 57-39, just underway in the fourth quarter in this Class C semifinal. Johnston brings it into the paint, and a whistle and a foul. It's the bonus situation for Hopkins now with 17 fouls on Manson. The big guy in the middle, Umler, with his third personal foul. 
Chris Johnson. One shot, bonus on. Johnston on the line. First free throw opportunity, no good. Goes high for his own board, but can't bring it down. Elzel with it. Over to Hiller. Manson quickly across the timeline. And there's the double team. Brown lost the ball, but off the foot of Hazen out of bounds. They know how to execute that double team so perfectly. The timing's great. The minute that that player turns and tries to avoid the one defensive player, the double team is there to catch the reverse dribble. Brown gets it back on the inbound. Now way to the other side. Here's Hiller for three. Up off the iron, no good. Rebound, though, taken away by Manson. They keep it alive with 7.15 to play. Down the middle is Brown. The easy layup is good. Just split the defense down the middle. Well, the layup might have been easy, but the path to the layup wasn't. A couple crossover dribbles in route. Heller to Johnston. Kisner to Johnston, that is. Off the mark, and here comes Heller uh, with the, the basketball. One. Tom Laura up top, over to Brown, down to 6.45 to play. They double team him and leave Hiller alone, so he'll stop and pop for three, nail it! A great second half by Ryan Hiller. He's got 16, and it's 62-39. 16, 14 of which have been here in the second half. 6.39 to play. The winner plays Detroit St. Martin de Porres tomorrow. Excuse me, on Saturday. This is a basketball game. It'll whet your appetite a little bit for that final matchup. Kisner looks for a pick. Can't get it. Does it himself. Scoop off the glass. No. Great move. Umlor though with the board. And there's a whistle. And it'll send Umlor back the other way to shoot the free throws. Kisner was just one crank short of the proper English, or he would have had a beautiful buckle. Don't believe Umlor has gotten a break yet today, has he? Not that I'm aware of. Six nine ball players been up and down the floor with all of them, and he's yet to get a break. He's, he's displayed surprising speed. Uh, he definitely is a hustler and in pretty good shape. His stamina in the finals is going to be critical. That and keeping him out of foul trouble. Kerber comes back in. There's Long lay checks out for Hopkins. Hate to be premature in making the call. One but it one. is 62, 63 to 39. Umlor nails the free throw with 6.28 to play. Again, just looking at the matchups, uh, Hopkins would be a team that would cause great difficulty against the ball club that didn't have outstanding guards. But Brown and Hicks, even though they've had some difficulty with the trap, have basically been able to handle the trap. You take a team that was a little suspected guard, and Hopkins would destroy you with that trap out in front. Well, the foul on the rebound against Manton, and that'll send Hopkins the other way, and Kerber at the charity strike. The other thing is that the inside game, Wes Umler and his counterparts on that baseline have, have really made a statement in terms of uh, their superiority. Shot up and no good. The final won't go either by Bumker. Ball still loose on the floor. Finally, Matten clears it out. Hopkins with a trap of the backcourt. Kisner with a foul. 6-17 to play. 63-39. Manton with the lead. Chad Brown taking the walk down to the charity stretch. And that's nine team fouls on Hopkins. One more and we're in the double bonus. Chet Brown at the charity stripe. One for two, the second half at the free throw line. And it's good. Ken, do you know where Manton is? This is a geographical quiz. Oh, you're cheating. Don't be looking over here. <laughs> Why don't you just say, just south of Grand Traverse Bay. You know, I, I, if I had to guess, I'd say just south of Grand Traverse Bay. You are amazing. A walking roadmap. 6.17 left in this one. 64-39 as Brown misses the second of two. Francis down court with it for Hopkins. Way out how they go. Bunker the sophomore. Kisner now. They reset things. 
With six minutes exactly to play, Kisner pulls up there, short off the iron. Rebound Hopkins, though. Long leg. Almost lost the handle. It was Hazen. He'll pull a free throw line there, roll it, no good. Rebound taken away by Manton. Here they come on the break. Hicks at the right side of the floor with the dribble. Watching the shoot to three. Five and a half to play. Hicks, they left him all alone. No good. Follows his own shot, but then off his leg and out of bounds. How many times do you watch uh, high school basketball and you see that kid uh, shoot that three and stand there and say it's going to go in? Not Mr. Hicks. He said, I'll take the second opportunity. Follow that shot beautifully. Didn't get the handle, but he was there for it. 64-39. Manton on top. Into the paint, that is Glumker and gets hammered. Immediately the official steps in. There's a few words exchanged. Just the heat of the moment. As uh, both teams playing extremely hard here today. Mr. Brown might be a little bit overly aggressive here in the fourth quarter of the semifinal game. Maybe a cool off time. Good recognition by the coach, Rainey Lafernay, brings him to the bench. And also four personal fouls on Chad Brown. Leaves with 14 points. And there's Glumker at the free throw line to drain the first one. 5.21 on the clock, a 24, a 23 point lead. 64 41. And Hopkins not giving up. Full court pressure on the ball. It's a quick. Hopkins Hazel. great at the double team. Off to Lutke. Lutke's a good backup guard coming off the bench. Handling the ball. Keller on top. Give it to Lutke. Hiller's got some great moves. Coming to the free throw line. Yes. Bounced on the baseline yes. to Helsel and good. Oh, coach has got to love it. 450 to play and 66 41's our score. Manton on top. Kisner down low. The layup and no good. Hit her with the board. Needs some help. Clears it off to Lutsky. Underneath. Here's Elza. Well, Hiller, like his counterpart, Kisner, with great floor vision, two times in a row, he set it up. Mark the assist down for Ryan Hiller. 68-41. Manton on top. Three-point off the mark for Hazen. I and like this club, Ken. They're tough. Watch him. Hicks pushing it ahead to Hiller. He's fouled as he goes to the hole by Hazen. And Hiller will shoot, too. A lot of what they're doing out there is just instinct. You'd love to attribute it to coaches, but I know that's not always the case. These kids just have good floor instinct. They're unselfish, uh, doing a really nice job of making the fake, drawing the defense to them, and then passing that basketball. Laringa will come in as Glumker comes out. Also out of the lineup is Hazen. For Hopkins. As Kerber comes back in. Free throw up and good by Hiller. Second one is also good. Seventy to forty-one, Manton with a lead over Hopkins in this semifinal. Here's Kisner down the hole, no good. Rebound by Helsel. Coach's comment that we have here in our portfolio uh, maybe tells us a little bit about this Manton squad and their coaching strategies. Early in the year, they were beaten by Okama by twenty-six points. On the second matchup, a forty-two point victory. Coach's comment. You can't just show up. You have to play the game hard every time out. Seventy to forty-one. Hopkins with the ball. Three twenty to play. Into the paints is Kerber, and he's fouled by Amla. It's a good Class C basketball team. It'll be fascinating to see how they're going to match up with Detroit St. Martin DeBoris. DeBoris looked like they had so many athletes so quick. 
but I like the determination of this squad. I like the way that they pass the basketball, and they've got the inside strength. First free throw, no good by Kerber. Second one is up and in. And there's no loss of determination and by Hopkins. Push it down court quickly, and there is Heller again. Ryan Hiller doing exactly what you need to do against pressure. You've got to take advantage of it. You can't just hold the ball and let time go off the clock. They now lead by 30. Here's Kisner. And he'll fire for three with Hiller all over him. And a neat exchange out at half court. After Kisner hit the shot, he and Hiller were going down court and slapped hands. Hiller stuck his hand down and said, nice shot. That's sportsmanship. 72-45, the other way, yeah, Hopkins coming to the hole, and Waringa had it stripped away. Ball out of bounds, it'll be Hopkins' ball, down to the baseline. Well, Hiller and uh, Kisner have carried themselves in that fashion the entire basketball game. I think that is a very important statement about what is important in high school basketball. In the paint, long lay, and the line of big man gets it to go. Hiller in the paint, and a whistle foul against Hopkins. Hiller that time on the left-hand side of the floor, a uh, real good hesitation move, wasn't able to execute it perfectly, but uh, shows again that he knows how to get to the bucket, knows how to score. And both teams now will go to the bench with 2.31 to play. The big man, Umlor, will come out, and Jason Otto, the 6'3 senior, comes in, number 50. And his fans know that he played an outstanding basketball game. John Morrow also checking into the lineup. Ryan Hiller with an unforgettable shot in a semifinal game. He aired that baby. Chet Brown will come back in as Helsel comes out. Seventy-two forty-seven. Two thirty-one to play. Seventy-three forty-seven as Hiller hits one of them. Kisner with Hiller on him. Here's Francis. Look inside. Drop step up and good by Waringa. Hiller double team needs some help. Here's Mara. He lost it on the dribble. Kerber the other way. Kick it out. Kisner stops, pops for three off the iron short. Rebound followed by Longley. And it's good. Longley. Longley with great determination and a good inside move. Kisner at half court again with one of those diving moves. Knocked the ball away from Hiller but committed the foul. Hiller went down hard in front of us. And, uh, my mind immediately goes to the fact that uh, let's get him out of there. They don't want him getting hurt for the finals. Well, that's Kisner's fifth, and look at him make the rounds as he leaves. First slapping the hands of Ryan Hiller, the man he fouled, and he's a compatriot out of the courts, and then slapping the hands of all of his teammates. You, know, you and I can come in as pretty much strangers to these basketball clubs, but uh, very quickly, that young man, Tim Kisner, has made a statement about his character. He's a likable young man. He's very determined out there. I not only like his basketball skills, I like his character. character. I like his personality. Uh, you know, he's just a class act. That's a big hug from Matt Hazen as he comes to the bench. And to replace him, number 21, Josh Slaughter. Keller hits the first one. Minute 50 to play. 74-51, Manton on top. Second free throw, this one's also good. Hiller to the bench, also seeing a standing ovation Andrews, by the Ranger faithful. Andrew Siddle will come in to replace him for the minute 45 to play. Francis will stop and pop for three from that left side. Francis playing in his final ball game for the Hopkins Vikings. John Morrow in there showing that all those uh, Ranger guards play the same way. And comes back the other way and tips the ball out. After he lost it at one end, took it away from 
Shane Waringa at half court. Well, you play against Brown and Hicks all the time. You've got to play that way. 75-54. Minute 10 to play. Five new players will come in if we get another stoppage, and we do. And the ball bounces out of bounds for Manton, and five new players will come into this Manton lineup. Jason Stewart is in there. Digraph will check in. Swanson is in. Also, Scheffler with his first action today. Andrew Swanson, you might have missed number four. And Russ Helzel, number 40, the five that came in. On an eight shot, won't go for Hopkins. Nick Wicks just in for the Vikings. Under a minute to play, long pass ahead. Shot up and rolls on the rim, won't go for Manton. The follow up and good by Andrew Swanson. The hook, the Kareem hook down low. 77-54 with 40 seconds to play. Slaughter up top, they go for Dalton, off the iron, won't go. Rebound for Hopkins and a whistle foul on the floor. They'll send long lay to the free throw line. It's going to be on number 40, Russ Helsel. This is a time of the game, Ken, that uh, you root for everybody that puts it up to hope that it goes in. 31 seconds to play. 77-54, Manton with the lead. And they will face Detroit St. Martin de Bourges tomorrow. It's up and it's no good. They'll face them Saturday. Saturday. Second free throw also won't go for Hopkins. The rebound comes back into the hands of the Vikings. Off the glass won't go by Nick Wicks. Rebound taken away by Men with 22, 21, 20 seconds to play from the top of the key. Shot well off the mark. Rebound, though, comes away to Swanson. Free throw line jumper and good by Jeremiah Schepler, a 6'4 sophomore. Big boy, nice touch. Lutke, launch, check that uh, Slaughter launches it from the other end. Off the iron, out of bounds. They've got basketball players in that community. Three tenths of a second showing on the clock. It will be Manton Ball. And Squad out here on the floor for Manton, probably representative of their JV team. Ball heaved at half court, picked off there by the new man into the game. And Hulkenberg, as the buzzer sounds, and Manton advances with a 73 to 54 victory over Hopkins in this Class C semifinal here at the Breslin Center. Too many weapons, too many tools. They had a great inside game, led by the big 6'9 center, Wes Umlar. He was outstanding in the paint, both defensively and offensively. And then at the guard slot, Hicks and Brown, I just liked him. They really played an aggressive game. They distributed the basketball well. They shot from the perimeter well. And in the second half, we saw the emergence of Ryan Hiller. Everybody was talking about him behind us. We know he had a lot of athleticism. He displayed it to us in terms of his scoring and his penetrating to the bucket. This is a team that matches up fairly well with Detroit, St. Martin de Porres. Fascinating game, should be here for the finals. Well, it'll happen Saturday afternoon at the Breslin Center in East Lansing. The Class C final is Manton advances and runs their record at 25 and 2. Hopkins will close out the year at 17 and 9. Again, if you'd like copies of this videotape, contact Advanced Video Services at 810-793-8889. Again, our final counts here tonight. In the Class C semifinal, Manton 73, Hopkins 54. For Mike Botkins, I'm Ken Delaney.